Hi, I'm Brent. Yep, that's me right there. Oh, and there I am again. Ooh, holding a guitar. Come to think of it, there are a lot of pictures of me playing guitar. I've been playing for the better part of a decade now. Over the years, I've noticed that documentaries only really focus on the guitar legends and the legendary guitars. But what about the people that build and forge these instruments? I think it's time we focused on them for once. Here's their story. Building electric and acoustic guitars are two very different things. On my journey, I had the pleasure to sit down and speak with two different guitar makers. Both of them had very similar skills, but very different stories. Uh, the first time I got a guitar when I was about 13, I guess, and uh, just before the Beatles hit it big time. We had already started our band. We were doing a lot of instrumental covers and stuff like that from the Ventures and uh, uh, real greasy hairball stuff. So being an impoverished, starving musician as usual, I mean, uh, you started fooling around with the gear you had. Couldn't afford Telecasters or Stratocasters or Les Pauls. Heaven knows they were way out of our league. Yeah. So we'd buy cheap high school Japanese guitars and start chopping them up and. Uh, uh, scavenging pickups off of whatever somebody else was throwing away. Played um, rock music quite a bit as a kid around the Windsor area and um, uh, I actually thought I was going to you know make a career out of being a rock guitar player mm -hmm. and uh, um, realized that that really wasn't the kind of life that I wanted, you know. So I um, kind of idled around. I was driving truck and other sort of nowhere jobs until I uh, ran across an article in a, in a magazine on a guitar that had been built by a young builder for uh, jazz guitarist uh, um, John McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I saw that article and I thought, wow, you know, like there, here was this guitar maker who had built this really cool guitar, and I thought, that's really interesting. When I was first learning how to build guitars, I had helpful tools, like the internet and books. But back when these guys started, they didn't have stuff like that. So how did they learn how to build? Well, a little bit of background. I got really lucky there that uh, in the mid-70s, I was mentored by a uh, professional luthier, and I mean this in the highest term. Uh, his name was George Kessler, and uh, he had served an apprenticeship with Hofner in Germany. And uh, then he was a Czechoslovakian, and uh, he moved to Canada uh, because of the political climate there became very unpleasant. We ended up working at the mine, like he was a geologist, I was a miner and slash musician. And uh, we got chatting one day, and uh, he invited me over to his place. And I mean, he, he could make, he made uh, world grade violins, uh, classical guitars, acoustic guitars. That was his forte, and he had never dabbled in electric guitars, so he was kind of interested by that. I showed him my butchered up Telecasters and a few other things I had laying around, and he says, that can't be hard to build. He says, heck, you know. So we started off, I think we built a dozen guitars over a course of a couple of years with George, and uh, he basically taught me the you know, nuts and bolts of what, what you require to know to make the thing play properly, intonate properly, and generally make it comfortable to play. The idea of combining making things with music and making an instrument, which I was really connected to, would seem to me perfect. So 
Yeah, so that's, uh, so like in literally, it was one of those epiphany moments where like in a split second of reading this article, I thought, I want to try this. That's really nice, so it feels really nice and comfortable too. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great sounding guitar for sure. Um, my website guy, who's a graphic designer, he, he designed the B. Yeah. And um, took it from there. Early, if you look at it, if you see a guitar of mine from the 90s, my B was different because I was, I was hand cutting them in those days. So oh, they, yeah. were, they were a little different than they are now. So that's what I did. I moved to Ottawa yeah. and uh, just started working at my craft there, mostly self-taught. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was self-taught, and um, uh, I started there, and um, the first 12 years of my career were in Ottawa. Of course, I got downsized from Cami, and that was in about 2000, and uh, I, my wife and I talked about it, like they gave me a buyout package and all the rest of this, you know, stuff. And my wife said, look, it's time. We've been downsized, both of us, three times each. That's enough of that. Well, it started from the, those ugly roots there because in the 60s, there was no aftermarket parts. So you'd be scavenging this from there, that from there, neck off a strap, put her on a tally. And so what more appropriate name than Frankenstein because I was stealing parts from everything. Frankenstein and Benatow have built hundreds of guitars for many different kinds of musicians all over the world. Uh, Kim Mitchell is uh, the number one guy there. Uh, I hooked up with him, jeepers, probably 2003, 2004. He's, he's been uh, a real good uh, endorsee of my products. He's, he turned in to be a good friend of mine. And uh, then it, it's a tumbling effect. Some guitars can be costly reaching prices in the thousands, depending on how much time and details put into the instrument. Uh, my instruments start at $5,000, and that sounds like a lot, but in the, in, in the hand-built acoustic world, it's really not, not too bad. It's great to this day. I, you know, every day I like going into work, you know, and uh, I love the challenges, and literally every week, I'll learn something new to add to my knowledge base. It's been a fantastic trip, and uh, I hope it'll go on in a much slower speed, because I'm tired of ri riding, well, like Jerry Garcia, I keep quoting him there, that Casey Jones, they're riding the train at full speed. I'm, I'm tired, I want to slow down.